Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to continue our understanding on supply voltage scaling. We know that the objective of supply voltage scaling is to scale a supply voltage without compromising on the performance. And we saw some of the techniques for the same in the last clip. It was nothing but static voltage scaling, multi-level voltage scaling, dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. Let's understand the approach to each one of them into a bit more detail. So the approach to static voltage scaling is what we'll discuss. The first approach is the feature side scaling. As we know that the technology is scaling down, right? The length of my channel is getting reduced. We have also studied scaling in details previously. With the technology being scaling down, the processes are improving. The width, the length, the supply voltages and the terminal voltages being scaled down. We know that when VDD is scaled down and dynamic power dissipation will reduce. But we also know that the feature size scaling means the terminal voltages, one of which also is the threshold voltage when that is reduced we know that the sub threshold current would increase exponentially so there is a limitation on reducing the threshold voltage but with the device or with the feature size scaling of the device we can definitely reduce our dynamic power dissipation without degrading the performance but once sub threshold current comes into the picture the designing becomes quite a challenge so this is just a simple understanding that when VDD is scaled down means VDD is equal to VDD by S where S is a scaling factor greater than 1 then I can have fixed voltages as we discussed in the previous clip and that's nothing but the static voltage scaling. The other one is a very interesting one. It is at the architecture level which is nothing but through a concept of pipelining. I can also explain you this with the concept of parallelism but let's understand it through pipelining. So suppose this is my block. I'll translate this analogy to digital circuits soon. And there are five particular people who need to do some task and each of them take two nanoseconds and each on one of them is dependent on the previous person to start his task. That means if A, B, C, D, E all are taking two nanoseconds, then finally say at zero time when I started, I will get my output of E at 10 nanoseconds. If I would translate it to digital circuit, that means in a time period of 10 nanoseconds, my entire in the time period of 10 nanoseconds, all my blocks which are performing sequential operation and dependent on the output of the previous stage will complete its computation and have my final output ready. That means a new output will come after every 10 nanoseconds and I can take a new input also after every 10 nanoseconds. In order to reduce this time period, what we do is we partition all these blocks and in between these blocks, we put some registers which operate on clock. Now what's going to happen is we technically know that each of this guy is going to take two nanoseconds to complete this computation, correct? So let's say I have task one, two, three, four, five. So when I start the computation, my task one will go to A, correct? At that point of time, all these people are not doing anything or are producing garbage at its output. In the next two nanoseconds, this task one will go to B and task two will go to A. This time, these three are idle. So after the next two nanoseconds, that means I have technically completed four nanoseconds. My task one comes here, my task two comes here and task three will be taken here. After the next two nanoseconds, task one here, task two here, task three here, task four here. And after that, task one here, task two here, task three here, task four here and task five here. After I complete 10 nanoseconds, I get my first task ready at the output. Same like what we discussed here as well. But understand what's happening here is another two nanoseconds, which is 12 nanoseconds, my task 2 is also ready at the output, which was not the case here. Here my task 2 would have come in 20 nanoseconds, correct? Here task 3 will come in 14 because in another 2 cycles, 3 would come at the output. Then another 2, 4 will come, so at 16. Another 2, 5 will come, so in 18 nanoseconds. So though each task will take 10 nanoseconds to complete its computation because all of these tasks are happening parallelly, which is nothing but pipelining concept which increases the rate at which the output is produced. At every two nanoseconds, I can produce a new output. And this is nothing but the throughput which improves the performance. Now, here, the clock which I'll have to give to my circuit here would be only of two nanoseconds because all of these guys operate on two nanoseconds only, correct? So what did I do was, I we know that time period is inversely proportional to frequency. So here, I could reduce my time period from 10 nanoseconds to 2 nanoseconds and hence I can say that I had improved my frequency considerably. Does everyone agree? Now understand how is this related to voltage scaling or static voltage scaling. We know that when we scale down VDD, correct, our time delay increases 
and my frequency decreases. Does everyone agree to that? Now, here I just saw that compared to this case, here my frequency improved five times, correct? Because there were five stages. Here it was one by 10, here it was one by two. So I could improve my frequency five times. See, here is a interesting part. In static voltage scaling, you are more concerned in reducing your supply voltage. So tell me if I keep my time period to 10 nanoseconds only and I don't reduce it to 2 nanoseconds because I'm okay with the delay. If I'm okay with the delay, do you all agree with me? The frequency which was 2 has gone to 10. Do you all agree with me that the time period which was 2 which has gone to 10? Do you all agree with me that VDD can now be made or VDD star which is a new VDD can be reduced by VDD by 5. Why? Because if if I had to make it faster, correct, I needed to change my VDD to a higher value. But I made my time period to a higher value. That means I was okay with the delay. And because I was okay with the delay, I kept my frequency as it is. It was earlier. I kept my time period to be 10 nanoseconds only. That's the reason I was okay with the delay. And because I was okay with the delay, I could go ahead and reduce my VDD by a factor of five. So depending on the number of stages, if you don't think about improving your time period and you are okay with the delay, because of this relation between delay, frequency and VDD, you can go back and change your VDD. Here, time period had increased five times, correct? That means I don't want this increase to happen. This increase I don't want. I'm ready to stay here only with 10. I'm giving that headroom for my supply voltage to reduce by a factor of five and that's what we exactly do. Again, a fixed value of voltage, supply voltage is scaled down, so it's a part of static voltage scaling. Let's go ahead. The other one was multi-level voltage scaling. Here what we do was we create islands, voltage islands. Let's understand what does this mean. So suppose this is my IC or this is my block where there are a lot of sub blocks present or subunits present. Now, as we discuss that, when we discuss the basic of multi-level voltage scaling, what we are going to do is we are going to have islands of voltages created. So the islands of voltages are created. This can happen at the higher level of abstraction or at the lower level, at the macro level or at the standard cell level. That means nothing but at the transistor level also. So now we have created islands of voltages. One of them could be 1.1 volt, other one could be 1.3, other one could be 1.6, other one could be say 0.9, so on and so forth. So I've created all the different islands of voltages. Now what I need to do is I need to similarly create the islands of my circuits. So all the circuits, I'm going to create small, small islands of those circuits of my entire circuit or small, small blocks into islands. And now this islands, which I marked in blue, right? These are my actual blocks. They can operate at different voltages at different instances of time. So at some point of time, say this is the block which we are considering. This can operate on 1.1 at some instant of time. At some other instant of time, it can operate on 0.9. At some instant of time, it can operate on 1.3 depending on the design that would be designed or that would be decided at the design time using a tool called static timing analysis, which will see the workload. If the workload is not very high workload, I mean is if it does not have to drive or it does not have to do quite a lot of work, it does not require very high voltage. And at each instant of time, depending on the workload, it will identify which voltage island it needs to connect to and try to reduce our VDD or the supply voltage and hence we can easily reduce our dynamic power dissipation. So this is nothing but multi-level voltage scaling. Now there are some drawbacks here. Let's understand if this was my block A and because my block B or in circuit A and circuit B, this block was operating with a voltage island of 1.6 and this guy was operating at 1.2. Sometimes what happens is if this guy needs to communicate with this block, because of the difference in the supply voltages, the output can be corrupted. And to avoid this, what we need is we need level translator circuits, which will restore the value of the VDD. So that's one of the drawbacks when one circuit is communicating with the other or in real time, it means that if one block is driving the other, generally it's not called communication, it's called one block driving the other block. If that's happening, you want both of them to have a similar VDD in order to get the correct output. If that's not the case, you need level translator circuits which is additional hardware. Similarly, the other drawback is, suppose this is block A at one point of time, this is operating at 1.6, at some other point of time, it needs to operate at 1.1. It can do it, but then the switching of supply voltage is depending on workload from 1.6 to 1.1, 
again would need some additional hardware or some switching hardware along with all this having such different voltage islands having the different circuits and placing it on the ic would require proper planning placement routing and floor planning which i'm not getting into the details but again this is quite challenging on the part of the designer so this is also one of the issues let's go ahead and understand dynamic voltage frequency scaling here we'll talk in very very layman's language what is going to happen here is this is my processor it has all the tasks which are coming through a queue which it has to undergo one after the other or in parallel because it's a pipeline processor but it will take tasks sequentially and then it will execute all of them parallelly so what will happen is this processor has some workload correct and operating system will try to identify the tasks of the processor and accordingly give some value to this workload which will be monitored by the workload monitor in very simple language it will identify what amount of work this processor has to undergo operating system would identify or the tasks to the processor and accordingly the workload of the processor will change the monitoring system will monitor the workload depending on higher or lower workload it will go to a dc converter and a frequency generator which will compare this work depending on the workload it will compare the fixed voltage to the monitor's output and decide whether it needs to increase the voltage decrease the voltage this is the supply voltage right and when the workload is less it can go ahead and decrease the voltage and help us in saving the dynamic power similarly for frequency as well and we have already seen when voltage and frequency both are scaled down my dynamic power is proportional to vdd square into f so both my frequency and my voltage can be scaled down depending on the workload which my processor has to go through so this is some of the basics dynamic voltage frequency scaling the word dynamic because at runtime it will check the workload voltage and frequency both are scaled so hence the name and this will help us in reducing the dynamic power dissipation i hope you have followed this stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much